Hi, this is Jeff with FrostyGarden.com, and today we're going to be talking about our off-grid, gravity-powered rainwater catchment system. If this sounds like something up your alley, be sure to come along for the ride. At our homestead, we are heavily dependent on our rainwater catchments for our gardens. Essentially, our homestead is entirely off the water grid. We don't have any pipes coming into our house to provide us water. All of our water is handled by a holding tank and we have a truck deliver our water every two weeks. This means that our water supply is extremely limited and also very expensive, not ideal for gardening. So, our first priority when we moved into our homestead was to install a gutter system on our house that allowed us to capture 100% of the water that comes from above. And we're going to walk you through our entire system here. Our rainwater catchment system starts with our gutter system. So we have 100% rainwater capture on our home and basically every downspout goes into a diverter that allows us to capture the actual rainwater. This is a Fiskars Rain Diverter Pro and unfortunately it is no longer made at this time and it's worked for us fairly well but we're honestly not in love with it. At some point I think what I want to do is I want to change this into a flexible duct that would then pipe right into our rain barrel and that would allow us 100% capture because these units do miss out on a little bit of rainfall. But overall, this system has worked incredibly well and allows us to capture most of the rainwater that hits our home. Moving into our rainwater barrels, we go from our capture system here into the actual rainwater barrel. And this is a Rubbermaid trash can that we've turned into a rain barrel. We originally did have a commercial solution for our rain barrels, but unfortunately one winter we ended up getting an early freeze and the parts on it actually froze and broke apart. And that unit was no longer serviceable, so we ended up building this system ourselves. Again, this is just a 32 gallon trash can and we've installed hose bibs on it that allow us to pipe the water uh, where we want it. And eventually we're gonna make this into a prettier system because it is just a trash can right now, but for now it does the work that we need it to do. Our original rainwater barrels had two outlets like this, and we ended up really liking that design, and so we kept it when we move forward into our new rainwater catchment barrels. And essentially how this works is the lower bib right here is used for any local watering needs. So we're able to keep about maybe 15 gallons or so of water, and we can use this, this hose here to actually fill a watering can. The second outlet here, this is used to pipe all of our rainwater back to a central tank and this allows us to have a singular point where we can actually access our rainwater. And having this design with two outlets is really beneficial for us and so we decided that we wanted to keep it going forward. All of our rain barrels are all built in the exact same way, so again we use this top hose bib in order to capture all of our rainwater back to a centralized tank. And then from there, what we're doing is we're using half inch irrigation piping that goes all the way back to our centralized tank. This is all powered by gravity. We essentially don't use any pumps to get all of that rainwater back to our central tank. But there's irrigation line that is running along and connects all four of our rain barrels all the way back to that central tank. What we really like about this entire system is that we always have local water that we can use from our rain barrels and then pipe that all the way back to a centralized tank. Having a barrel on every single corner allows us to basically deal with very heavy rainfalls. Since this is only half inch irrigation pipe, it can only handle a certain amount of flow. And essentially what we can do is when the water gets to this level, it will start flowing back to our central tank, but we also have the ability to capture all this amount of water and eventually that will drain back into our centralized tank. This allows us to deal with infrequent and occasional heavy rainfalls that can't actually flow through this half inch pipe all at the same time. The fundamental key to using gravity in a rainwater catchment system is that all of the barrels have to be physically above your actual tank. You'll notice here that we use bricks to basically elevate our tank and this allows us to ensure that the water levels are above and since water will flow downhill, as long as the water tanks are physically above the actual water tank that we want to drain everything into, the water will continually flow in that direction. Another important thing is that all of the irrigation piping that goes down to that central tank, it never rises above the elevation of the actual central tank. So it's again a constant flow downhill and that will allow gravity to transfer the water into our centralized tank. So this is our centralized water tank here and this is basically a 375 gallon water tank that is all piped back from those individual water barrels. So all of those water barrels come back into this actual tank and allow us to capture all of the rainwater from our entire house. 
So again, the important thing is here is that this tank is physically below those other rain barrels, and that allows gravity to draw that water down and constantly fill this water tank without the need for pumps or anything else. We can generally fill this tank with about three quarters of an inch of rainfall, so it doesn't take very long. And that's usually enough for us to have a water supply for our gardens for about two to three weeks in most cases. Given that our water tank is white in color, it does allow a little bit of sunlight to pass through into the tank. This does create some algae problems for us, and we've tried in years past to cover our water tank here with things like tarps and other opaque things that would prevent the sunlight from getting in, and honestly it hasn't been much help. Our long-term plan is to eventually replace this tank with a very large 1,000 gallon black tank with the, that would then prevent that algae from developing. But overall, this is actually worked for us. Also, another thing I wanna point out here is that we do make sure that we cover the opening to our water tank. And this is a netting, just a standard screen that you might find. And the reason we do that is because we do have mosquitoes around and that prevents them from getting into the water tank and trying to breed in there. So it's very important to guard your water supplies, especially in the north where we are, where we have a lot of mosquitoes and they really like to go into water. All of our rainwater catchment systems are all largely passive in nature and they bring the water back to this tank so we don't need any pumps or anything crazy. Once the water does get into this tank though, we do use an actual pump to pump it into our irrigation systems and hoses where we actually need the water. So inside this tank there's actually a pump that is then connected to a hose and it's essentially gone over, going over here uh, a little ways away to a valve system that allows us to essentially have multiple zones of water supply. And this is basically going to give us four different zones and we use some to handle our raised water beds, we use some to handle our deck gardens, and then also we have a flower and perennial garden here that it also is used to water. Another thing that you'll see here is that we have a filtration system. So we also have a filter on our pump, but then that is fed into this filter system that filters everything down to 200 microns. And what that makes sure of is that we don't have any problems with algae or other stuff that might get into the water supply. If it does, we end up filtering it out and it's not a problem from there. One of the things that we very quickly learned when relying almost entirely on rainwater catchment systems is that we had to have a technical backup in the event of droughts and other times where we don't get rainfall. Although we are in the north, we do live in what's called a subarctic desert. And basically what that means is that sometimes it doesn't rain for very long periods of time. When that happens, we need a technical solution in order to deliver water to our homestead. We'll cover that in a future video, but we do have a backup plan just in case it doesn't rain. Once again, I'm Jeff with FrostyGarden.com and I'd like to thank you for watching. If you have any questions about our rainwater catchment system, we'd love it if you put a comment down below. We're a small channel with a small potential audience and those likes and subscribes really do help us a lot. If you think we've earned it, we would love it if you gave us a like and subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.